Please grab your favorite things, get comfy, and get ready to be impressed, inspired, and interact with AI driven presentations. And we are excited to have our AI barista here, Dr. Nadia, or we call her Yaya, and also uh, Miss Pushpa, uh, brewing some fresh ideas for you today. And they are very passionate about teaching and innovations. Uh, they are popular members of CheckKeeps, uh, UPM Teaching and Learning Innovation Committee. So, yeah, sit back and relax and enjoy their perfectly uh, AI sharing section. So, I pass to Pushpa first. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Chong. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, uh, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. I'm Pushpa uh, from the English Language Proficiency Division uh, Center for the Advancement of Language Competence, Calc. Very happy uh, to see so many here today. Thank you for coming. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to share something that has uh, proven to be valuable to me. So hopefully uh, you would, it will also be valuable to you. Now, as um, educators, we often use uh, slides, uh, presentations to deliver our teaching and learning uh, content. And we have been using some excellent timeless tools to aid such presentations. Uh, PowerPoint, Google Slide, Canva, uh, H5P course presentation to name just a few. And now we have AI at our disposal. So uh, today, uh, let's add a new tool to our teaching toolbox. I'm excited uh, to introduce to you uh, Gamma, uh, an AI-powered tool designed to uh, help us create presentations, uh, documents, and web pages quickly and efficiently. Uh, with Gamma, you can transform simple text prompts into fully developed presentations uh, in a matter of seconds. So if our presentations can be uh, auto-generated with startup content, uh, attractive layout, eye-catching design, uh, aptly predetermined theme, colors, and images, would that not be a steal? Uh, we use presentations and documents regularly. Uh, I do too. So I wondered if there is a tool that can assist me uh, in getting started or that makes designing easier while I focus on the content. And that's actually how I discovered uh, this AI, Gamma. Uh, I won't say I've used this tool extensively or that I use it uh, every time uh, for my presentation. So please forgive my limitations. Uh, but I have used it, and I like the eye-catching output. Uh, and it is also not too complicated to use. I think that's important, right? So the goal for today is to uh, introduce everyone present to Gamma, explain some basic need to knows, and then show you how to use it um, to generate AI-driven presentations. I'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to do that. Um, so while I focus on generating presentations uh, that impress and inspire using AI, Dr. Nadia will later show us ways to make our presentations more interactive. So very important how to sign up, right? Where can I find uh, Gamma AI, right? I think it will be good if you can go to this AI page. Uh, of course, you can Google Gamma. Uh, the name of this AI is Gamma, and that is G-A-M-M-A, -M -M uh, and find the website or homepage. Or uh, you can scan this QR code uh, that you see on the screen. I will also share, uh, I've shared the link to this uh, AI in the chat box. So you can also sign up using that link. All right. Uh, so the advantage to using this QR code or the link that has been posted in the chat box, um, basically it would give you extra credits. Right. So credit is actually the currency used uh, by this AI. Uh, if you Google search and sign up, 
uh, from the website, which you can also do, you will receive 400 credits uh, to start with. And with 400 credits, you can generate about 10 free presentations. But if you sign up using this link uh, or this QR code that you see on the screen, then you can get 600 credits. So that's about uh, 15 free presentations that you can uh, generate. Credits are especially important uh, if you're using the basic account, right? Uh, if you have insufficient credit, then uh, that may restrict or limit uh, your use of AI. I'll explain how the credits work uh, in a short one. All right, so I hope uh, you have found uh, the website or you have already, you're setting up your account, right? So as I'm showing you later how to generate the presentation, you can also try it out. So why uh, choose Gamma? Why is Gamma an excellent choice uh, for creating our presentations? Uh, first and foremost, the AI generated content, right? So Gamma can actually generate entire presentations from simple text prompts, making it easy to create decks. On our own, we would take time to think about the content, uh, the layout, the organization, the design, the color, right? Uh, so Gamma takes over that part of the task and it can actually save us a lot of time. Uh, Second reason, customization. We can edit and tailor the generated presentation according to our needs with simple uh, prompts. Right? Uh, you can sign in as personal, right? And you can just use any um, email account that you'd like. Uh, the registering should be simple, uh, quite simple. All right, I hope you're not having any problem registering. Okay, so customization is actually one of my favorite features. I want to capitalize on AI's ability to propose a great design and layout and help me kickstart the presentation. But as a presenter or project owner, I always like to have control over my slides. Uh, as I think I know, I probably know the content and my audience best. Right. So uh, the option. Ispa, hmm. Ispa, sorry, ada soalan. Uh, pasal registration or sign up. Yeah, personal. Personal. Okay. Sign in as personal. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's customization. So I can customize according to my needs. Right. Uh, third reason the interactive elements that we can incorporate or integrate, right? So Gamma supports uh, various multimedia integrations. Uh, I think um, Gamma has by far the most integrations that I have seen. So we can incorporate uh, images, GIFs, videos, uh, live charts, diagrams, music, TikTok videos, uh, buttons, forms, and the list is endless. Right. We can also collaborate. Right. This, this feature is quite similar to Canva and Google Slides. So we can work together with our colleagues in real time or invite students to collaborate. Uh, this enables co-editing and feedback. Right. And last but not least, uh, the responsive design that Gamma offers. Right. Um, so Gamma presentations are quite fluid. Uh, the slides actually expand to fit our ideas and content, unlike the typical uh, PowerPoint or Canvas slides, uh, where we have to, we can only put in uh, information that fits the frame given, right? So Gamma is a bit different in that sense. All right, uh, pricing and plans. So just like any other AI, uh, we have the basic version, the free version. We also have some paid plans. Uh, I I'm using the free version and I'm quite happy with it for now, All right? So you can also start up with the free version. With the free version, you get 400 credits at sign up if you sign up directly from the website. If you sign up using a unique referral code that's given to you, then you get 600 credits, 200 extra credits, right? 
and you can generate up to 10 cuts. So cuts are the name for slides uh, used in Gamma. And you can export uh, your presentation in PDF or PowerPoint uh, format with Gamma branding or watermark, right? Uh, then you also have the plus or the pro accounts, okay? $10 a month if you're billed monthly, $8 if you're billed annually, and $20 for the pro account, right? Uh, advantage with this paid accounts are you don't work on credit basis, you get unlimited AI usage, and you can have uh, longer presentations, right? But there's a way to work around the number of slides. Uh, you can add your slides manually and just use the AI to maybe edit or suggest some images or some content. Later, I'll show it to you. Uh. All right. So talking about credit usage, so as mentioned previously, if you're using the basic account, we, we use the credits to generate. Uh, anytime you generate uh, the entire presentation or you do any type of editing using AI, uh, that would cost you credits, right? So to generate an entire presentation, document, or web page, uh, you will have to spend 40 credits. Right? Smaller actions like uh, maybe adding content or changing an image or uh, asking AI to suggest uh, an additional card, uh, that would cost you between 5 and 10 credits each. Uh, you will receive credits at sign up. Unfortunately, they don't refresh or increase on their own, uh, but you can get additional credits uh, through referrals right? or upgrade of plan, of course. Okay, so how do we use this Gamma AI? So first and foremost, we need to have an account, right? Um, verify that email, your email to access your workspace, right? Then you try and explore templates that are available. You generate uh, content, all right? Uh, enter a brief description of the kind of content you want. Uh, specify the tone and set any other parameters you may have before starting the AI process. And last but not least, you refine and finalize your presentation. Right? You use the Gamma tools to edit, uh, share uh, your presentation. OK, all right, I hope we're good so far. Um, I think we will move to the Gamma homepage now. Um, so this presentation that I've just shared with you uh, is an end product of Gamma, right? So I'm going to just uh, exit here and go to my home page, all right? So if you have registered, if you should uh, see something similar, all right? So this is what the home page or the dashboard looks like once you are signed up. It kind of reminds me of Canva a little bit. I think most, if not all of us, are familiar with Canva. So this should be easy to learn. Uh, so all the presentations that we have generated in the past would be listed here. All right. Now we're going to focus on these three uh, buttons that you see on top to help us get started, right? So you have import. Um, so this is if, you're, if you are uh, trying to generate a presentation, this is how you get started, right? So maybe we already have uh, a presentation in PowerPoint format that we want to import and edit using Gamma, right? So then we will click on this button, right? and perform the import, right? Uh, if I want to use Gamma uh, to create a presentation, but I want to do it on my own uh, without using the AI, then I would click this button here, new from blank, right? And it will uh, generate or it will start a presentation for me, yeah? Uh, but this is what we're going to focus on, 
uh, how to create the presentation using the Gamma AI. All right. So click on this. OK, and you get taken to this page um, where you have the option on how you would like to get started. So paste in text. Uh, we may have uh, an outline or we might have sketched or scribbled our ideas of what we would like to have in the presentation, maybe slide by slide or even just a brief description. Uh, we can type or uh, copy paste that description here. We also have the option of importing files. So if we have that outline typed in a Word document, we can import that here and click continue. Um, or we may have uh, files from other sources. OK, we may have files from other sources. We can use the import with AI, right? Or also paste in text. And this middle uh, button here, generate, right? If we want to let AI uh, suggest and draft the presentation for us, then we will uh, choose this middle option. Right, so let's try that. Okay, so once you click on that, you have the option to choose uh, what do you want to generate, right? A presentation, website, or document. I have not explored website and document yet, right? I've only been using it for presentation. Uh, <clears throat> so the number of cards or slides, we can have a maximum of 10 cards for the free version, all right? Or we decide. So let's say I want six cards, and we can also choose the language of our presentation. Right. So I'm going to go with English UK. Um, then we enter our prompt here. Okay. Um, you have sample prompts at the bottom that you can also choose from or get inspiration from. So as you notice in the examples. Your prompts can be as simple as a topic, right? Or they can be more carefully crafted prompts using techniques like CoStar that was presented to us in, our, in one of our earlier Copy AI session, right? So let's say, okay, let me just go through this. All right, so let's say the language of flowers, okay? Click on that, and I'm going to now click on this purple button, generate an outline. We're not generating the presentation yet. This is just the outline. All right. Now, we can change the order of these cards. Uh, we can add cards. All right, click on the plus sign, and you get to add a new card. You can delete it, right? Um, so let's say I'm happy with this, right? With the outline suggested. You can always edit it later as well, right? This is just to get started. So if I'm happy, I can click on continue. And you notice here, this will cost 40 credits because I'm generating the entire presentation using AI. So, okay, once you click on that, uh, you get to. Uh, pick your theme or color, right? And you can choose uh, any one or more than one if you want, all right? So let's say I'll go with dark and professional. All right, so let's say I'm happy with this theme. Then I can click on generate. Okay, so we can sip our drink, check on the weather, and before you know it, uh, the presentation is ready. Okay. 
So this is how uh, quick and easy it is. So if you recall, I had uh, decided on six cards, right? Language of flowers. I did not give uh, the AI any content, right? Um, I just went with what was suggested. And this is the output. So all the information that you see here, the layout, uh, the images, they are all AI generated, right? Fully AI generated. Now, of course, a word of caution, uh, I would never uh, encourage anyone uh, to use AI generated presentations as it is without checking or editing, not just gamma, I guess, for any AI for that matter. I personally wouldn't. So as the subject matter expert, we should always check and decide the final output. So that's when the editing comes in uh, handy, yeah? All right. So let's see now, uh, using this presentation that has been generated by uh, Gamma, let's see how we can edit, uh, edit it further and make this our own, all right? So I'm going to explain the buttons that you see. So in between uh, slides, you notice three buttons. So you can add a blank card, right? Uh, or you can add the card from a template, OK? Uh, so let's say I want this card with two columns, right? Or I want uh, maybe text and image side by side uh, as I click. Uh, this will generate more cuts, additional cuts, right? And this is how you can add cuts. But I'm performing this manually, so no credits will be used for these actions. Okay, and if I want to delete the cards, I just click on these three buttons inside the card and delete. Okay. Now, if I want to use AI, I click on this middle button. All right, add card with AI. Now I'm going to ask AI to uh, do the adding, all right? And AI would give me suggestions on what I can add, right? So if I'm happy with any of this, uh, I can click on it or I can even type something out, all right? So let Gamma decide and surprise me. You leave uh, this uh, highlighted box. So if you want a different layout, then you pick right, the layout that you want, the template that you want. So let's say I want to add a card, okay, um, on symbolism uh, in different cultures, right? And this will cost me five credits to generate. So uh, I let Gamma decide the template. So I'm going to click on generate. And then a new card is added by the AI. All right. Okay, so uh, that's the three uh, buttons in between cards. Now let's look at the three buttons within each card, all right? So this first uh, button that you see with the three dots, that is for you to drag and drop your cards elsewhere. So maybe I want to change the order of the card. So I simply click on this, uh, drag it. And as I'm dragging, I see that blue line. Uh, that will indicate where I can drop it or where I'm going to drop it. So if I, if the line is in between cards, then it'll be dropped uh, uh, in between cards. If the line is within a card, then what I'm telling Gamma is I'd like to merge uh, these two cards together, right? But if I, uh, I'm not happy with this, I want to undo, just click on these three dots on top the top right hand corner and click the undo and it will revert okay uh, the second button that you see is card styling which allows you to change the look of the card all right so for this particular card the picture is on uh, the right so let's say i want to change it to the left or to the top uh, or i want uh, the image to be moved to the background. I can just play around with this, right? I can change the colors. Uh, I can change the images, sorry. Uh, I can change the colors, right? Um, 
Okay. All right. Uh, and other uh, style features. Okay. And uh, this last button here uh, allows me to ask AI to improve my card. All right. So some suggestions of improvements are listed here. But if I want to, if I have something else in mind, then I'll just type out the uh, instruction. So let's say I want to change this layout into a timeline, right? If that's possible, then Gamma AI will help me change that. All right. If you think, um, no, this doesn't fit the content presented, then you can undo and try a different option. OK, so that's that. Huh? Now, on the, uh, the section or tab that you see on your left, right, uh, gives you an overview of your slides. So you can close that if you don't want or leave it open. If that gives, helps give you an overview. Uh, then on the uh, right-hand side, OK, you have more editing uh, buttons uh, that you can use. OK, uh, so you can edit with AI. All right, so just give instructions or choose from the samples. You can choose card templates. All right, you, if you want to add a new card. So the way to do this, all right, to edit, add any of these functions is just to uh, drag and insert. All right. Uh, the same principle for images, for videos, right? Anything. Yeah? So just drag. I want to insert a YouTube video, maybe. All right. And I want it in a separate card. So I'll put that here. Then maybe go to uh, YouTube and get. Um, a YouTube video link. All right. And if I, and it's added as the video is added. All right. So you have, um, yeah, cut templates, uh, smart layouts, right? You can choose uh, different uh, layouts, different ways of presenting your uh, content. You can click on uh, basic blocks to uh, incorporate uh, text, headings, tables, lists. Right? You can insert images right, from various sources, uh, videos. Right? You can embed apps. Right? I have not tried uh, this yet, but you can even incorporate things like TikTok videos. Huh? Um, and Instagram posts. Uh, then you have the option to include charts and diagrams as well, right? Uh, forms and buttons, right? And on top, right, you can uh, click on theme to uh, maybe change the color, the theme. If you're not happy, uh, we have the option to share this Gamma presentation with a colleague so we can collaborate, share, export, or embed. I tried embedding uh, onto Putra Blast and it works. Um, all right, and then for present, okay, you have the option to present within a tab, go full screen, or presenter view. There will be a pop-up window with your notes, all right? And how do you add notes? Uh, within each card on the top right-hand corner, you have the option to add notes. And even this, you can add your own notes or get AI to help you with it. All right. And uh, this last three dots here uh, helps you to undo, export. All right. So if you want to export to PDF, export to PowerPoint, right, you can do that from here. OK, so I think uh, that is it from me. Uh, about Gamma. So explore and see if this is an AI for you. If it is great, if not, no worries. There might be another AI out there uh, that suits your needs. 
if you have any questions, feel free to type your questions in the chat box. I'll try to answer them before the session ends. I think I'll hand over to Dr. Nadia now to show us how we can merge AI with other tools to make our presentation interact interactive. Okay, thank you so much, Puspa, for a very informative session just now. Uh, I'm Nadia from the Faculty of Biotechnology and Biomolecular Sciences. Uh, so I hope at this point, Gamma AI had managed to impress and inspire all of us here. So I'll be picking up from what Puspa had left off. Let me share my screen first. Okay, boleh nampak ke? Boleh? Boleh, okay. Oh. Alright. Yeah, hide the bar. The hide small the bar. bar. Alright. Okay. Nice. okay, so my part will be more focusing on the interactive aspect of these AI-driven presentations. Okay lagi kan? Boleh proceed eh? Kita. Okay eh? Okay, all right. Okay, so um, if you had generated slides from Puspa's session just now, hold on to the slides because we are still going to use the slides later in my session. As equally important as having completed the slides, which is already a huge relief, kan? especially if you are teaching a new course, preparing slides for a big presentation, for example, uh, as much as we think that it's important to prepare and complete the slides, it's also important to ensure that uh, the presentation itself or the session is interactive or we can stay engaged with our students, with the audience. So I believe all of us would agree that in a physical class setting, the engagement strategies are more diverse, I would say, kan? Sebab kita boleh tanya soalan and we can get the feedback almost immediately from the students. Even by looking at the students' faces pun, we can already at least know whether they understand uh, the materials or not. Should we proceed or should we repeat some materials that we have already taught them? But if you are talking about online class or virtual setting, this could be more challenging. I believe everyone will agree with me, kan? Uh, we might ask them to uh, switch on their webcam, tapi mungkin ada yang tak switch on. If you ask questions, biasanya susah nak ada yang respond. So my part would be more on improving the engagement of our lesson or presentation by embedding some interactive elements in the slides. That's why I uh, requested all of us here, if you already have slides generated from Gamma AI just now, you can still use that slides or you can even use your own slides uh, to help adding some interactive elements in the slide and hoping to improve the engagement of your audience or your students. Kalau if you are a, an avid fan of Copy AI or avid follower, <laughs> macam tengok drama bersiri pula kan, I'm sure you know that we will be sharing some tricks and tips and also a new tool or uh, could be a tool that you knew before but haven't used it yet. So for this session, I will be introducing a digital tool called PEDEC. Okay, put it simply, PEDEC is a tool that can help you to add interactive elements in your slides sound familiar kan? Because if you're already familiar with H5P, for example, uh, on Putra Blast, PEDEC is quite similar, okay, quite similar to H5P in terms of adding interactive elements. However, H5P is more useful for asynchronous lessons. For PEDEC, it can be used for both synchronous and also asynchronous uh, settings, okay? So on top of PEDEC, I will also couple this with AI tool. Okay, in this particular session, I will just use ChatGPT lah sebab ramai yang familiar dengan ChatGPT kan. So let's see how we can uh, use this combo, PEDEC plus AI to create a more powerful learning moment for our students and also our general audience. Okay, so far I rasa kita pernah, mungkin ada yang pernah guna PEDEC sebelum ni sebab even for myself pun, I start using PEDEC uh, from uh, Dr. Chong punya session lah masa PKP. Dr. Chong is my original sifu lah untuk PEDEC ni sebenarnya. But to make sure that everyone is on the same page, maybe ada yang pernah guna, ada yang tak pernah dengar pun. So let me first introduce what is PEDEC 
and what are the uh, interactive elements that you can put uh, or use or integrate using Padek. Okay, kita pergi Padek dulu. Okay, Padek ni sebenarnya dia ada website dia. Uh, if you want to pay for Padek, obviously you're welcome and if you pay for Padek, you will get access to full features lah. However, if you're not uh, willing to pay, you can just use the free features and I think those are sufficient already. Okay, in order for us to demonstrate this Padek, I will just use Google Slide, okay, without going to the original Padek website because Padek is also uh, a Google Slide add-on. So if you want to look for Padek, you can go to your Google Slides, you can log in or sign in using your own uh, Google account. And let me first show you where to find Padek. Okay, so what color you datang this landing page, you takkan nampak Padek tu lagi. Let me just click on a blind presentation. Semua boleh nampak kan I punya Google Slide page ni? Boleh, boleh. Okay, boleh, boleh. alright. So let's see, let's say I, I just click on a blind presentation. Kita sekarang baru nak cari Padek kat mana kan? So kat tab atas ni, you look for extensions. Okay, you look for extensions again because it's an add-on for Google Slide. This is where we will look for that add-on. So kalau kita tak pernah ada padet, you click this extension and you click this add-on and click get add-on. Okay. This is for those who never install padet. Okay. So in this search tab, you just type padet. Even kalau you type pair pun dah keluar padet ni, you click the top one, padet for Google Slides add-on. Nanti you akan nampak this one, padet for Google Slides. But for my case, it's already installed lah in my uh, Google Slide kan. So I don't need to install it. So I just click it. So since I dah ada padet, I just click this padet for Google Slides add-on and click open padet. Okay, open padet add-on. So once you click this open padet add-on, nanti you akan nampak this tab padet, okay, padet tab ni akan appear on the right hand side of your browser. Okay. Nanti you akan nampak start lesson but do not click start lesson first lah because we have not yet added any interactive elements kan. I will just briefly go through what are some of the interactive elements that you can add in your slide. Okay. For example, again if you are familiar with H5P, these interactive elements are I think already familiar to you as well. You can add, for example, text or choice or number, even draw or draggable element. However, this one uh, comes with a price lah. You have to subscribe. Tapi jangan risau sebab as I mentioned, even with the free features, I'm already satisfied because Padek has template library. Uh, this is what I've been using for my classes to my students in my presentations. So if you just scroll down a bit, you akan nampak this template library. You just click this template library. Okay, just imagine that you are presenting your slides, kan? the one that you had generated just now or any slides that you have in your store. Then you might want to add some interactive elements at the beginning of the lesson. For example, uh, recapping what uh, the students had learned from the previous week or even during the lesson at the end of the lesson, summarizing the whole lecture, that one hour lecture kan. Uh, in my case, let's just go for during the lesson. So let's see what's, uh, what are some of the interactive elements that Padet has or can offer uh, within this particular template library, particularly during the lesson. So if you click during lesson, you can find some templates already available and can be edited. Uh, itu yang bagus tu sebab kita boleh edit later to meet our needs. Kita nak tanya soalan apa, nak minta student buat apa. So for example, kita boleh include that slide or true or false. We can even ask uh, the students to draw mind map and this is all happening uh, during the lesson. Okay, tak kisahlah kan in, in class, physical class ataupun online. I've been using it for both. Uh, physical classes pun I guna, online classes pun lagi lah I guna sebab I cannot really capture the attention of my students and ensure that they understand the material kan. Okay, these are some of the interactive elements. Now comes the big question lah. So bila nak pakai AI nya kan? Okay, jangan risau nanti kita tunjuk. Okay, kita nak start uh, add slide dulu sebab in order for us to start adding interactive elements, we have to first upload the slide lah. Okay, let's say I go back to this landing page. Now I am uploading slides that I had generated 
from Gamma AI. I got this from Puspa as well. So let's say I have a slide on, um, let me see, color psychology. Okay, Puspa just now generated slides on the language of flowers, can. But uh, last week, she also generated slides using Gamma AI uh, entitled color psychology. So I'm going to use this color psychology to start adding interactive elements in this slide. Okay, so you just need to upload the slides and wait for it to be completed. Then once the upload is completed, you will see the slides lah kan dekat Google Slides ni. Now let's say you started presenting the slides and after the fifth slides, then you think, okay, maybe this is the best time where you should stop for a while and ask the students a simple question in order to uh, at least get an impression lah whether the students understand the material or not. So, kita akan start guna padek lah untuk add the interactive element. Now, again nak cari padek kat mana, kita pergi atas je. Sekarang you takkan nampak padek lah sebab kita tak add lagi padek uh, add-on tu ataupun viewkan di landing page ni. So, you need to click extension again. Click this one, open padek add-on because it's already been installed in my Google slide. So once you nampak ni, again I takkan start from scratch. I prefer use the template library. Okay, let me go to this template library. And since this is during the lesson, I will just choose this one during lesson. And since this is only after the fifth slide, I would just like to ask maybe a simple true or false statement. Okay, I would choose this one. Okay. And once you click this, okay, this template, template slide, immediately or almost immediately this particular slide will appear after the fifth slide so but we choose the fifth slide just now kan now comes the chat gpt in the picture let's say you tak nak fikir apa soalan you nak tanya uh, to your students kan then i have a list of prompts that can help you ask chat gpt to generate a few questions. In this case, since this is a true and false question, so I will just use a simple prompt. Okay, I have this prompt ready on my slides later. Maybe Chong can share juga kan Chong dalam chat box. So let's say I just copy this prompt and I go to my chat GPT. For this session, I'm actually using chat GPT for Omni. Sebab I nak upload the slides that had been generated just now using Gamma AI and immediately ask ChatGPT to come up with questions. However, rest assured, kalau you guna free ChatGPT pun, you still can upload slides or file but ada limitation lah um, berapa you, uh, berapa dan uh, berapa kerap you boleh dan size dia juga. Or kalau you tak boleh upload slide, it's okay. You can just copy and paste some of the notes from your uh, slides and you can always paste here and ask ChatGPT to generate questions based on the prompt. So in my case, since I'm using ChatGPT for Omni, I can just upload the slide from my computer, the color psychology slide just now. Okay, then I paste my prompt asking ChatGPT to help me generate for, uh, several true and false questions. So, kita tunggu je soalan yang akan diberikan oleh chat GPT. Okay. Then after you get the question, kita boleh choose lah. What is the question that you would like to embed as an interactive element in the slide? So, let's say just now you just pick after the fifth slide. So, could be this is the best one that you can ask the students whether or not it's true, color psychology is the study of how colors affect human behavior and emotions. So you go back to this Google slide and you just paste the question here lah. Okay, this is one type of interactive element that you can uh, integrate in your slide. Let me show you one more example before I demonstrate how can these interactive elements uh, be presented to your students and how can the engagement take place. Okay, let me just go and show one more example. For example, I nak tanya 
multiple choice. Okay, multiple choice. Right after this, I nak tanya multiple choice. So again, from the template library, I will choose this multiple choice slide. Okay. Gambar ni you boleh ubah. Kalau tak nak ubah tak apa. But what's more important is you want to put your own question lah because this is question from the template library. So you want to put a question that is related to the presentation. Again, we can make use uh, of chat GPT. So using the prompt, for example, this prompt based on the file that I had uploaded just now, please generate several MCQs and also provide the answer. So let me just copy this and go back to my chat GPT. You don't have to re-upload the file. You can just put this from and chat GPT would help generating some of the MCQs. So again, you can go through the question and if you are satisfied, you can choose one of the question let me just randomly choose any question lah kan for the sake of demonstration. I will choose the first question. What is the primary focus of color psychology? So I go back to my Google slide and again, I just copy and paste this question. Now, the question is here, but what about the answers? So sekarang kita kena tukarlah pilihan jawapan tu berdasarkan A, B, C, D yang diberikan oleh chat GPT ni. If you think all the answers are correct, I mean, one of the answers is correct, then you can immediately use it lah without any editing kan. So let me just copy the first answer ni. Okay. Okay. Now kat mana kita nak edit question? Sebenarnya kalau you tengok ke bawah ni, dekat tab bawah ni, jawapan asal kepada soalan template library ni dah ada kat sini. A, absolutely, B, whatsoever, whatsoever. However, we are editing or adding or changing to our own uh, answers kan. So, kita boleh back, back lagi. Then, kita pergi ke, since this is a choice type question, you can click choice. Okay. Once you click choice, then you can change all the answers here. Okay, this is the first answer from chat GPT. So, I will just go ahead and copy and paste the rest of the answer. So let's say I'm copying this one as well. And let's say I have copied C and D as well. Okay. Let's assume I copied C and D as well. And you can just click update slide. Okay. So you just have to, you just have to wait until the slide is updated. Now, having added two interactive slides, the first one is the true and false. The second one is the multiple choice question. Now let us see how can your student view this particular slide and get engaged. Meaning answer the questions lah. So but this is the purpose of uh, adding the interactive elements kan. So in order for us to do that, kita click this one. Uh, masa ni dah boleh. Kalau gatal sangat tangan nak click start lesson tu, uh, sekarang boleh click. Kita click start lesson. Okay. Okay, once you click start lesson, Padek would ask you whether you want this presentation to be in a student pace or as a student pace activity or instructor pace activity. The difference is um, if you make it a student pace activity, then the student would have control over the slides. Dia boleh tukar slides sendiri, dia boleh pergi slide mana yang ada question, yang mana dia nak jawab on their own. So I would suggest this is more suitable for asynchronous lah. If you are presenting it in class or during synchronous session, I would choose instructor pace activity lah in which you can have total control of the slide. Your students cannot. Okay, so I choose this instructor pace activity. You tunggu sekejap sampai pendek akan keluarkan the code to join the lesson. Okay, so let's wait for a while. Okay, now you akan nampak this page, you can ask the student to manually type joinpd.com on their smartphones ke kalau tengah online class dekat browser lain di laptop dia ke and key in this uh, key code LPVQLR or alternatively you can just give the students link. Kat bawah ni kan ada nampak give students link. So I will get everyone involved, okay. 
Oh, wah lajunya ada hadir yang type join PD. I tak share lagi link. Okay, I share dekat chat box. Banyak cakap ni. Okay. Okay, so siapa yang tak klik lagi join PD tu, boleh klik link yang I share di chat box tu. Okay, now what you have to do as an instructor, you just have to ensure that one student connected pun okay dah. You can already start the class, okay. So since I have five to six students connected, I will start the class and the students can also join later. Okay, if you have or if you have joined this pad deck, you will realize that you cannot change the slide kan. Sebab this is an instructor paced activity, only I can change. But once I change the slide, your slide on your browser, on your smartphone pun akan berubah. So let's say we are presenting or I'm presenting until I get to the interactive slide, this one. Okay, now from your view, as the students who are connected to this, you will be able to see and also answer the question. Okay, eh lajunya. Eh bagusnya audience petang ni, eh tengah hari ni. Sebab dah lunch kot semua ni, lajunya. Okay, so kalau you nampak guys ni, out of 28 students who are connected, 20 already responded. So as an instructor, this is the point where you want to show the answers to the class and discuss the outcomes uh, of the question. You akan dapat at least some impression lah. Okay, up to this fifth slide, students I ni faham ke tak material yang I cuba sampaikan ni. So in order for you to discuss, you can just show response and the whole class, wah, pakat-pakat eh you all. You all ni pakat-pakat ke ni. So you will be able to discuss uh, the answers for that particular question. And this is quite simple lah sebab hearnya true and false question. Now let me go back, okay, let me go back to the next element. Okay, this one. What is the primary focus of Kyler psychology? So on your slide, okay, on your slide, I pun nak tekan jugalah slide ni. Okay, I tekan, I, I jadi student juga. Okay, I jadi student juga. Sebab so, I pun nak tunjuk mungkin ada yang tak connected. Okay, on the student slide or the student's uh, view, uh, this is what the student can view. They can see the question and they can also select the response. So this is the student view. So back to my view as an instructor, this is my view and this is where I can show the response to the whole class. Soalan ni tak susah tapi nampak gaya ada banyak jawapan. So mungkin at this point you want to revisit some of the materials that you have taught even though it's only 10 minutes ago kan. Mungkin students kita susah nak faham. Then this is the point lah where you, where you can discuss uh, that particular material in the class. Okay so far okay. MCQ dengan true and false. Quite simple kan these two. Boleh? Alright. Okay. I proceed with the fourth or not, not the fourth, the third element. Let's say you are not that keen on asking this multiple choice question. You would rather the students voice out their own opinions uh, rather than simply sebab ada students yang tak suka uh, cep, main cepat tau. Dia tak suka gaming punya element ni. So mungkin ada students yang more laid back, uh, more into provocative uh, statement, uh, suka berfikir. So you can add other elements. For example, draggable. Okay, draggable pun sangat membantu. So I go back to my template library. Okay, during the lesson. This is an example of draggable element. Let me show you this one lah. Okay. Okay, I choose this one eh. Draggable slide. So I click this template. Template slide, I did not do anything. I just Baka mungkin 0.1 kalori sahaja untuk klik slide ni. Then you will get this interactive element embedded in one of your presentation slides. Now let us go back, okay, go back to our chat GPT and ask chat GPT to suggest a few topics or questions that would trigger the students to think and choose whether or not they agree on this particular statement but not as simply yes or no the level of agreement or disagreement can be at various level. Okay, so macam mana kita nak buat prompt yang sesuai? Okay, I balik kepada slide I. So this is an example of prompt that I have crafted. Um, I would like to stress 
Okay, let me copy this first lah. Okay. Okay, again eh, ni prompt untuk draggable slide. Kita nak minta student bagi opinion. Tapi bukan dalam bentuk perkataan. Just option untuk drag their opinion to a what level. So, prompt yang I sediakan uh, generate inquisitive statement that require the student to ponder whether to agree or disagree. The statement should not have a right or wrong answer. Okay, this is the essence of the discussion lah. So, chat GPT would suggest a few statement that would not have a right or wrong answer but rather would trigger the students to think. So, let me just choose one. Okay. The influence of colour on human behaviour is more significant than the other environmental factor. So, the students would have to think uh, Dia macam, <laughs> macam jawab Google form lah kan A Level of agreement tu Slightly agree, slightly disagree Extremely disagree Okay, yang ni tak apa, yang ni kita boleh besarkan okay, Mana size dia ni Alright Okay, this is an example of parliament in which the students can track the opinion lah. Um, I will just add one more element then later kita akan tengok macam mana the students can track the element tu kan. Okay, the last one, um, what about mind mapping? Okay, mind mapping pun quite interesting. So, let me add this mind mapping. Okay, mind mapping ni kita boleh guna stylus, kita boleh conteng, kita boleh type so the students have more freedom to uh, add in their response. So I just choose this mind map and I will just copy my prompt, okay, to again ask ChatGPT to suggest what kind of topic or subtopic that may require some mind mapping. Kalau you tak satisfied, with the response from chat GPT, you can always refine your prompt. Don't worry. If let's say the prompt is too, uh, the response is too broad, you can specify and refine. So let's say I think this is too broad and uh, it's not to my liking, then I can just refine it a bit more before I post the questions later, okay? Okay, let's say my instruction to the students would be to argue about this cultural context of color psychology in terms of cultural differences. Okay, let me just put this here. Central idea is the, oops, sorry, cultural differences. Okay, now I have two additional interactive elements. Okay, two minutes to go. Okay, let me start the lesson again and I will be sharing a new link because I'm adding new elements. So, I don't think the previous link is uh, still working. So, let me start this new lesson. Okay. Again, it's an instructor-paced activity. Okay, let's wait for the code and also the link. Okay, I can share terus link ni dekat chat box so you can click the new link. Okay, if you click this new link from the student view, you akan nampak my slide. I will just go right away to the new interactive slides that I prepared the last two just now which is the draggable one and also the mind map. So let's focus on the draggable one first. Okay, kalau you nampak dot ni kan, uh, ini dot yang student boleh drag. So depending on the question, the students can actually voice out their opinion whether to agree or disagree with this statement. And again, it can be debated or discussed later during the uh, lesson. Okay, let's say I, I'm showing the response so 
you can see even from a total of 30 students, there are various opinions, kan? So, this is an interesting point of debate lah sebenarnya kalau you nak debate later in the class. Okay. Quickly, I will just go to the last one eh. Last one, mind map. Okay, let's say how you can make use of this mind map. Okay, this is the instructor view. Again, from a student view, this is what you will see. And you can type, you can draw lines. For my students, I perasan ada yang suka melukis, <laughs> ada yang suka menulis. So, this is an interesting avenue lah sebenarnya untuk melihat kecenderungan pelajar tu sendiri. So, kalau I tengok kat sini, even show response ni, you akan nampak uh, ada yang, okay, mungkin kita susah nak tafsir student ni kan, C sahaja. Student ni pun susah ditafsirkan. So, this is where I will go through uh, all the responses and discuss in class based on the topic that uh, I gave to the students lah. Okay, I think that's all from me. Uh, one minute past two. <laughs> Maafkan saya Chong, satu minit terlebih masa. <laughs> okay, I think, I think that's all. Uh, I wish I have more time but uh, I think that that's sufficient already untuk satu jam kan Chong? Hmm, yes. Let's answer the question. There's one question, every question is a new link. Actually, we can formulate the question, the interaction beforehand, only share the link. Mm, then you no need to, every time you create a new interaction, then you share the new links. Lah. But there's also an option to promptly add a new interactions when you already sharing a link. But it's very limited choice, lah. like they have certain template for you to choose only. Hmm, betul. Any, any, any questions? Any other question? Hmm. Dr. Nadia? Uh, ya, yeah, saya. Uh, okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, the last one, the last one whereby they have to draw mind map tu kan? Uh -huh. So, from the instructor's view, you will get individual site from every student. Is that how? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, I see. So, automatically, this the, the, the slides, your slides will be added up lah, will be more. Uh, I can only view the response. Okay. Uh, I ada lagi tak slide ni kejap. Uh, while sharing screen, Dr. Amila, dia ada dua option. Dia boleh share individual or you can stack them together. Say okay. you want, uh, dia dua-dua pun boleh. Say you want the student to draw certain thing, another student draw another thing and then you can stack them together. All right. It's very okay. interesting. As, as instructor, we have the option. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, hi Dr. Nadia. Uh, saya nak tanya, tadi yang masa you guna pedek tadi, uh -huh. uh, slide tadi tu is um, from, tadi kan uh, Puspa uh, tunjuk cara guna game AI kan? Mm -hmm. uh, adakah from drama AI tu you import masuk ke pedek and then baru you involvekan interaktif? Ah uh, betul. From, from Gamma AI, I export dulu. Uh, you can export uh, in either format lah, PDF or uh, PowerPoint kan from Gamma AI. Tapi uh. untuk Google Slide, PowerPoint lah PPT, PPT ads or PPT. So, so you, you upload first to Google Slide, then only you can start adding interactive element. Oh, guna Google Slide, bukan uh, PDF. Um, sebenarnya boleh pergi ke PDF website tapi I would prefer Google Slide lah sebab kita memang one stop center kat situ je kan. So, uh, I add terus ke Google Slide. So, bila you present to students, you are mm -hmm. using Google Doc punya presentation ke? Ah, uh, Yeah, I guna Google Slide. So, sometimes I toggle lah between if I have my own PowerPoint dalam drive without any interactive element, then I would prefer using that lah. For example, kalau I nak guna stylus ke apa kan. Mm -hmm. But specifically for interactive elements using PADEC, I would go to PADEC lah. Tapi since uh, you dah tanya Syam, ada option juga, ada uh, app nama class, class point. So class point ni quite similar to PADEC, tapi dia boleh add interactive element dekat slide you terus di dalam drive you. Maksudnya kalau you present guna PowerPoint from your own PC ke laptop ke, you boleh terus add interactive element kat situ. Cuma I'm not that familiar yet lah with class point. But it's doable lah sebenarnya. Okay. Just that um, tadi maksudnya we have to be online lah kan? Mm -hmm. Betul. So, okay. What, katakanlah kita dah prepare guna gema AI and then kita use PEDEC ni untuk includekan interactive punya soalan. 
but then we have to download SPPT. Uh, is it possible? Adakah macam tadi kan macam on your view side you nampak jawapan dia kan? Mm-hmm. Uh, on student side view dia lain kan? Kalau respon you tak akan dapat lah kalau you download to my understanding yang tu you kena tengok dashboard pedak. Hmm. Kalau you nak tengok balik respon student, you boleh tengok dashboard pedak. Uh, Chong can can correct me if I'm wrong lah. Kalau you pakai free version, dashboard pedak for that particular uh, session tu, you boleh view dalam sebulan eh Chong for free version. Hmm. Hmm. 30 days. 30 days. 30 days. So let's say you want to analyze kan, you you want to do some analysis on the student's respon, you boleh balik ke pedak uh, dashboard then analyze from there lah within 30 days for uh, free features. Kalau you ada full access then I rasa dia akan permanent dia ada lah kot dekat dashboard tu. Okay. Faham hmm. lah. Okay. Tapi Alright. dia boleh export uh, Excel uh, untuk analyze. So ada respon kan? Mm-mm, boleh export kan. Okay, any okay. more questions? Rasanya itu sahaja kot. Ada yang tak makan lagi. Ingatkan jawapan betul semua dah makan. <laughs> okay, boleh pergi lunch lah semua orang. Yes. Okay, okay thank, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for uh, those yang adios. Thank you Yaya and Pushpa. And also kat sini siapa nak share any particular AI, please feel free to contact us 